Listen guys, I made that damn murloc theory, at least I hope this one makes a bit more sense. Either way, I think it's an interesting concept, please just listen to the whole theory, okay? Blizzard has, during Legion, hinted strongly at a return for Bulvar, at some point at least. Will he perhaps have a major role to play in this expansion? Maybe one down the line? And could this match up with Sylvanas' strange methods of war? Here's my, perhaps crazy, points for why Sylvanas and the Lich King could become a power couple in the Warcraft storyline. Number 1. Bulvar isn't as strong anymore due to a number of years having gone by since he became the the new Lich King. Nursul has gradually influenced him, uh, Bulvar becoming weaker and weaker with the years. He has, after all, had more time to sway Bulvar than he had to influence Arthas. And that was even only through Frostmourne, imagine what the helmet can do to a human mind. Bulvar might have been a strong-willed paladin, but we've seen how strong the manipulation and mind control of the Lich King is, so it's not far-fetched to say that Bulvar is gone. Know that I shall claim Agoras for my own. Arthas may have sought revenge on the Citadel, but I have other plans. We might see Bulvar, but now it's not his voice echoing through the top of the world. Number 2. Bulvar, now basically Nur'Sul, has been acting curiously shady and cold in Legion, in both the artifact weapon and class mount storylines. Tyrion's body rests below us, in the Hall of Champions. We will join you shortly, Death Lord. You will not succeed, Darian. <laughs> the light will not allow it. I feel like they are hinting at him getting a bigger role sooner or later with dialogue like this. You have stolen the dragon's life energy. Now, bend it to your desires. Pervert it with your darkness. And actions such as trying to reanimate Tyrion's corpse. Turn to light's hope. The body of the great Tyrion Fordring rests beneath the chapel. You are a monster, Darian. Without monsters, there can be no heroes. If he is planning on replenishing the Scourge, why not invite other undead forces in? No matter what, something's gonna happen. He's done things that only a Lich King would consider doing. Or perhaps someone else. Number 3. Sylvanas is not gonna last in the Horde. After a small night of an peasant taunted her, she burned Teltzel down to a pile of ashes, in cold blood to basically spite the living and their hope for a brighter future. She then lets her own men, already dead or alive and kicking, be killed by her own Scourge and Blight, then raising them once again to fight for the Horde, and to face the same terrible fate as her. Those are actions the Lich King might as well have been the conjurer of. Her dishonorable actions and unnatural war methods have brought her in bad standing with arguably most of the Horde leaders uh, after both Bane and Salfang has shown more or less obvious signs of defiance. Salfang even choosing to die an honorable death instead of serving her, but Anduin jails him to perhaps talk some sense into his uh, thick orc skull. By raising and using enemies and allies alike to fight in death, by slaughtering civilians en masse on Teltwasil in Gineas and Kata, Sylvanas has basically made the horde into a different kind of scourge, a scourge that are raising the dead to fight for them, using awful methods and unnatural cruel magic to win wars. But here's the difference, they are doing it by their own will, not being controlled by anyone directly. I can't see the horde staying this way, thus Sylvanas and probably a lot of the Forsaken will be either killed or ousted in my theory. My guess, if I had to take on the goggles of a blizzard rider, is that she'll be expelled as she is simply too powerful and important to be killed off just yet. And it would be a too alike Garrus's fall if Blizzard wouldn't do a similar thing twice on this scale. At least I don't think so. Number 4. Sylvanas' single purpose is to stay alive. So why might Sylvanas ally herself with the Lich King? So after reading the Horde novella and, well, playing the game, my theory is that she doesn't really care about the Horde per se, but uh, rather the protection that it gives the Forsaken. They would've, as the story explicitly states, been wiped out if it were not for the Horde taking them under their wings. After Sylvanas' death at Icecrown Citadel, she has been searching for more Valkyrs to save her from the hells she saw in death. Another parallel to the Lich King, by the way, which there are quite a few of now, she uses the Valkyr to raise the dead, even Arthas is Valkyr. She uses the plague to kill and use the fallen soldiers in her ranks. She raises the dead herself. She, in my eyes, seems to dislike the living as they see her and her people as unnatural. Something that she surely, as we also know, has battled with thinking herself. So she, in spite and in conflict with her own self-image, hates the living for being what she isn't. 
alive. Pretty rational, I'd say. She is very cold. She doesn't care if she kills her own soldiers uh, or if large amounts of civilians are slaughtered for no good reason other than revenge and spite. Ever since her and the Forsaken left the Scourge, she has been set on saving herself and her people from dying out, and after ICC, from the horrible fate waiting for them in the grave. Two very strong motivators in Sylvana's character. Therefore, I don't think she actually cares about the other Horde races or the Horde in general, other than just using her for her own protection against whatever force that wanted her dead. That's not a new theory, of course, uh, but she has been saying that she wants the Horde to survive and win the war against the Alliance a lot recently, and uh, she certainly does, but for nothing but her own safety. Of course, why wouldn't she want that? Well, now that she has been expelled, in my theory, uh, she will have to find a new source of power to help her and her people from being wiped out by the two main factions. Who else but Nursil, the Lich King, to help her there? They share basically the same methods of war, the same cold calculated approach, the same twisted moral barometer. It's just about survival in a world that sees you as unnatural. A world that wants you dead. And for good reasons. You are natural. You are what can be considered by the living, a monster. So the only force you could possibly team up with that wouldn't be an enemy of her existence would be other undead. With the Lich King there are no morals to hold her back. No horde with their honor codex and love of life and nature. Just her and large forces of undead she can order to do anything she'd like. What could perhaps hold her back? That she resents Arthas who was part of the scourge for killing her? Maybe even her soul? But maybe she can look past that considering it's Bolvar now. In any case, how much of her own inner hatred can she tolerate to suppress for the sake of her own survival? I think we've seen that she's willing to go far in several expansions already. What difference is there between you and the Lich King now? Isn't it obvious, War Chief? I serve the Horde. So that's it. Perhaps Archer Boy is gonna get some competition. The Lich King and Queen. I'm sure there has to be something out there that makes this uh, theory not work entirely, but I do think they have been hinting a bit towards the Lich King not being dormant anymore or him being a force in the world that we shouldn't forget about. And it's also in his interest to join up with another undead army if he plans on launching an attack on the living. Or at the very least to defend his own kingdom. Let the fanfiction between those two flow. Thank you, and as always, uh, that's just a theory. Uh Hi again. As you probably know, uh, I don't make that many WoW videos anymore, but I do actually stream WoW on Twitch uh, pretty often actually, so uh, I just got affiliated and such, so uh, you know, just uh, go there. I, I have emotes and shit, uh, go follow, I stream roughly every week, uh, yeah, thank you, see ya.